Hey everybody, it's the Trout. Hope you're having a great day. If I say the words progressive bluegrass to you, what does that mean? Yeah, it's kind of an interesting term, isn't it? Well, to figure that out, here's a little bit of that music. So what you just got through hearing is a live performance from the band Sickard Hollow, and they call themselves Progressive Bluegrass Band. Now, the second question you're gonna ask me, of course, other than what's Progressive Bluegrass is, where did the name Sickard Hollow come from? It's actually the name of a road in Alabama where their guitar player, singer, and songwriter, Alex King, hails from. So the band is comprised of four guys bass player, mandolin player, guitar player, and a fiddle player that used to play all different kinds of genres of music. But they decided to come together and started playing and writing songs and what they consider progressive bluegrass. And now they're performing all over the United States at festivals and their fan base is getting bigger and bigger. And I had the opportunity to sit down and talk to Alex King, their singer, one of their singers, and her songwriter where they were getting ready to perform back in Montana recently. Alex told me the history about the band, and I have to be honest with you, I love their music. I think it's part of Americana, and the fact that it just makes you feel good, too, is great. So before I get to the story of Sacred Hollow, two things. One, if you like this channel, put a check mark to it. It's coming up right now. And remember, this is available on a podcast everywhere you have podcast. And secondly, I want to let you know that on November 11th, whenever you hear this or watch this video, Sacred Hollow's brand new album is being released. So make sure you go to their .com, which you'll see on this video, sacredhollow.com to check out their new album. So up next, Progressive Bluegrass, which I don't care what you call it, I consider it great music. Sacred Hollow, next on The Trout Show. Let's start with the name. I didn't see anything about where the name came from. Okay, yeah, interesting enough. Um, I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama, and okay. it's actually the road behind the house that I grew up at. It's called Sickard Hollow Road, and it runs along, um, you know, through the woods, kind of along this river called the Cahaba River, which I spent a lot of time on, and uh, a lot of the music that I write is about nature inspired or I, I ride a lot by the river but uh we we hadn't started the band we had just started kind of picking together before like it was an actual thing and we had filmed a little video of us we played a um uh i know you rider we did a little grateful dead tune and uh oh, we yeah, posted it online we posted it online you know and um my old neighbor from growing up jeff blount i hadn't talked to him or even really thought about him in you know years he sees it somehow on Facebook or somewhere. Somebody posted it and, you know, he comments, he goes, Oh, you guys should, you guys should do this and call yourself Sickard hollow. So I saw the comment and I just ignored it because the name was personal to me. So if we were going to sure. start the group, I didn't want it to be like, okay guys, you know, this is the, <clears throat> this is my, you know, I didn't want it to just be for me. And it. it turns out they love the name. They go on there and they go, yo, we should be Sickard hollow. So I was like <laughs> full speed ahead. I'm say less, you know? <laughs> yeah so it's cool yeah it means a lot to me and like i think it's a unique name people are you know people ask about it often so um yeah it fits us for sure because cool. you guys are all now in nashville correct yep that's the home base all of us okay. that's where we met um we're all from various parts of the country but um everybody's been in nashville for at least seven years the others matt fiddle player grew up there from the you know from i think he moved there when he was like 12 10 to 12 he was in california before that right. bass players from texas he ended up there he's been there for like 
I want to say a decade now, maybe a little longer than yeah. that. And me and Will have been there for about seven and eight years. Well, I'm in Dallas area. I'm a Texas Boom. guy, so that'll give you an idea where I am. Um, so it, my exposure to bluegrass music was twofold. Beverly Hillbillies. Okay. Fast and Scruggs. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I used to live in Missouri when uh, Silver Dollar City just opened up. Okay. And so I would go down there, and that's where I really got into that more that you know, kind of sitting around with the mandolin and picking and grinning kind of thing. And right, I, I kind of very old style music and I, I enjoy it because it's Americana. That's what I right. like about it because it's based out of America. I mean, there's, for, you know, the blues and that and, and uh, jazz come out of America, but it really doesn't get any action. I don't think anywhere else like jazz gets a lot of cover in um, Europe and so right. blues. So that's where I got started listening to it. And when uh, you guys got together, um, there's four in the band, right? Four of you. And you got this, and the gentleman plays fiddle. Is that all he plays or does he play something else too? That's all he plays. Man, okay. he airs that thing up. <laughs> He's so, a man. So you got you, you play guitar. I assume, is it mostly acoustic or is you play some electric all, too? All acoustic, yeah. Okay. But we run our pedal boards. But yeah, I play, um, I play acoustic and not too i don't get too crazy with the effects i'm trying to incorporate that in there but um yeah i play acoustic will plays mandolin he does have an electric mandolin but we haven't incorporated that yet and he'll run yeah. that like a good amplifier and i mean it's like shredding on an electric guitar but what we <laughs> just it's amazing it's a company called what are they called eastman i think and he got it he got it custom made and they, right. he loved it. it's like a little prs on him it, it, it reminds me of like a prs oh really and pair, yeah it's incredible you should check out you definitely check them out but um what we just did recently is Parrish was playing upright for a while. and um, I was going to ask you if he did, yeah. He switched to electric bass now, um, and he's going to do both. He's, we're going to incorporate both, but he's a funk player. Like He wasn't an upright player you know, growing up. He had an upright bass, but he's 32. He's the oldest in the band, um, also the most recent member of the band because we've been through a couple different lineup changes over the years. Um to end up with the four piece, but it took a little bit. His upright messed up at a show in Columbus, Ohio, and we're up on stage. And I'm like, dude, go get your electric bass out of the car. He's like, you think I should? I'm like, what up? We, you have to, you well, know, go on stage, dude. You so he, he hops in and we're playing a fiddle tune. And I don't know if you're familiar with fiddle tunes, but you know, it's like an A B structure where you're pretty much playing the melody. Everybody passes it around. It's an instrumental song. Okay. And we're doing it as a three piece and he plugs in his, his electric and you know starts <laughs> slapping it and the whole crowd just erupts you know goes crazy so um we've been integrating that and we jam a lot so it's not like traditional bluegrass like we do our own thing with it we write you know it's, it's songwriting oriented but then we'll open it up and you know have a funk jam for however long and let everybody you know get weird and get psychedelic um so we're really trying to do our own thing with it it's not like your everyday bluegrass you know well, you're so not the, you're not playing. Of course, I think the thing said something about progressive bluegrass, which of course is like, what does that mean? But uh, and you got the thing in there about uh, the Grateful Dead and things like that. But, that's like also like not even you know people have been talking to us about that recently. Like we're heavily inspired by the Grateful Dead, but I think the only thing you'd really pull from like our music compared to theirs is like we cover some of their songs, but the improvisational factor of it, you know, I don't think you would listen to us without reading that excerpt and be like. Okay, they you know I hear Grateful Dead, but you could, yeah. you could obviously be like, oh, you guys probably like the Grateful Dead just because of the jam aspect of the music. Well, you know something else that I think it's interesting, and and some of the people I've interviewed recently, and, and that's one of the reasons I also thought was interesting is a lot of people don't, and I'm talking about non musicians, right. people don't understand that what you're doing now is still part of American music culture. And that means. You know, you're in a band, you travel from one place to the other, you know, in a vehicle or anything, and you're America. still, you know, you're not playing 10,000 arenas, you're playing to small crowds right. that is very intimate, you know, intimate when you perform. So, and, and so you get more of a closeness with the audience. But I think what I like about it is that hasn't gone away. You know, right. it's, it's still, you know, when I grew up, it was, you know, everybody wanted to be in a band. That's how I got started playing guitar. Everybody wanted to be in a band. And, um, you know, if you got, if you had the talent, you played a lot and maybe played some other gigs, 
you know, and played the country, whatever you got, you know, it built up and right. the A&R people would hear you. Oh my God, you're going to sign, you know, all good stuff. But it's not that way anymore. But part of it, not in the music industry, but what you're doing is same part that still goes on, which I'm more, I like that. 100%. I know it's a lot. I, I know it's a lot of work. And, Dude, and Austin. <laughs> it I mean, Austin, man, hell yeah, it's a lot of you work. You probably don't even half the time don't even know where you are a lot of times because you're That's just one place to you know, the other. And I mean, and uh, I, I remember one time I saw um, Rod Stewart years ago when he was real popular. Cool. And we were, we, I lived in Kansas City at the time. So we saw him and Rod forgot where he was. Yeah, that I and you know he said something. Hey, hey, you know, in his British accent, he said, "Sir, a Scottish accent." And everybody right. goes, "You're not. You're in Kansas City, dude." <laughs> right. Of it up. That's funny. And, and we're on and, the Bafford. I uh, apologize. Continue. Sorry. No, go. No, no, no. Go ahead. It's just gonna say that just happened the other day. So we're on the road with this band, Spafford. It's their jam band, and you know, I've I've been seeing them for a little while, so it's been pretty surreal just getting to hang out with them. But I'm talking to the drummer. You know, I'm just making small talk. We introduce. I'm like, okay, wh where are you guys at last night? How's the show? He goes, where are we at right now? I'm like, we're at Bozeman. <laughs> I don't know where we were last night. I'm like, that's a it just It was so funny. He was being very genuine about it. He, he literally had no idea. You know, get on the tour bus, hop off the bus, play the show, get back on the bus. So it's but interesting. You know what? That's part of America. That's what I loved about. I love what you guys do. And, and it doesn't matter. I mean, obviously, your music has to be a little bit closer. You can't get up and play heavy metal in a, in a, a you know, coffee shop. You're not going to do that. So, right. you you know, and that's why I figured when you said upright bass, but that's more of what, although it's a pain in the butt to carry around because it's so huge, but it's something you don't have, you know. We have it with us, actually. But, yeah, it is the, the full upright is a bitch to take around. But he has a little small, like a smaller body one that right. he brings. So when you're telling people about what you guys play, how do you describe what your music is? I mean, you got to tell people somebody. So you're, let's say you've, you've played a couple of tunes, you sit down or you haven't started. Right. And you're getting ready. Like, so what, what kind of, I saw, where are you playing tonight? What's the, is it a, is a, a Raiden is what it's called. I think is what it's called. Um, it's in Whitefish. I think it's kind of like a bar. Okay. We've been doing bigger ones recently, but I, um, I think it's like the local spot, but I think it's going to be a smaller type uh right shotgun room you know long room probably smaller stage at the end is what i've heard but i've never been there before so so when you're setting up do people come up to you and say hey guys what do you do do you do, do you people ask uh, you like what kind of music i mean what do you tell them it depends on the situation with these spafford shows not really because a lot of the people who show up early have probably seen our name on the thing oh so uh, you're you're opening up for another the other band right okay now Three shows and they've been going um i mean amazing because we're trying to break into these new markets and like sure when a band has a, a draw like the bozeman show was incredible i mean our crowd was huge and like it probably would not have happened like that if we wouldn't have been on the gig with spafford because they were able to play at the biggest you know the big venue in town the elm so we had that you know that the door open for us and it you know i believe next time we go back we'll have an even bigger crowd because we just won over a bunch of fans it was an amazing show so we are as we are the support actor so the, the support act right now for these sure just free shows but when it's just us showing up to a place and it's like a local bar or whatever or what you know local venue yeah people will come up and out you know what do you guys do i say bluegrass but then i'll you know there's a couple that because i'll 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 go off of that as well progressive bluegrass because you can kind of interpret that whatever way you want it's like we're right. taking it we're yeah. trying to th our our seasoning and our spice into it we get punk grass because i mean we're all metal heads punk head. like we grew up we didn't grow up on bluegrass none of us did you know yeah um, and i think that kind of leads through in, in my vocals sometimes or kind of like the rock aspect of it um but yeah jam what i call it is jam grass because to like the to the core it's grass but it's not traditional and we jam on it. You know, most of the songs have a section where we let it try to let it flow and try to create a, a, a genuine musical moment, you know? So I like jam grass, but call it what you want. I don't really care. You know, labels, whatever, like hopefully people just listen to us play and enjoy it for mm -hmm. what it, other than trying to put us in some box of string band categories. Cause I think depending on the tune or depending on the night, we could be a couple different variations of it, you know? Yes. 
setting sun Like a shining bandit on the run But the night time's bound to come around again Oh, that night time always comes around again Every night, just to hold on to that light. But if it always shone so bright, we'd end up blind. Every day you wanna leave it all behind, move far across the county line. For years you tried to find what isn't here. For years you tried to find, for years you tried to find, for years you tried to find what isn't here. Well, well. Your album comes out on the 11th, I guess. November 11th, the album's coming out, and we are okay. stoked. So are you are you playing all I, – I, what do you get, how much time do you get normally? 45 minutes, an hour? How much time do you get? Lots of depending. We've been getting 45 minutes with Spafford, which is such okay. a – Ah, uh, man, shit. By 45 minutes, we're just getting our – we're just getting stretched out. Oh, yeah, sure. Fun being able to, you know, we – with these sets, like, we start out strong. Like, we, we cater it to, like – Let's hit them hard. You got, we got this amount of time to show them what we got. And then hopefully, you know, we, we can we reel them in and then they want to go to the next show or they want to come see us play a two set show in the future where we can really, you know, do our thing. Do you, yeah, do you, yeah, yeah. okay. So you got about 45 minutes, which means you don't have time to, to screw around. You got to jump on yeah. it and do it. To jump in it. You got to, you got to go for it. And, it. and there's a way to cater to it also, because sometimes the jams go longer. And we got to have communication on stage and make sure like we're, we're on point. And the last two shows have been like, we've timed them perfectly. Everything's gone great. We've made a ton of new fans and it's all you can really hope for. Cause when you flop the opening slot and especially when it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. spot, damn it. You know, cause we do, you know, I'm speak for myself. Like I, there's shows that I think I don't play, you know, I think that's for everybody, but we're our biggest critics. So, but these, these Montana crowds have been very, um, uh, they've been it's been our music has been well received so it's been really really um inspiring and um reaffirming of our path you know it's 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 going well well you're in a beautiful part of the country too that Absolutely. helps i mean you you walk outside you smoke you know you're smelling up mountain air and you're looking around and all these things you're like it's yeah, it's, amazing. it's literally god's country out there and you're like it's what they call big big sky country obviously but so when you get through i've always wondered about this so you play a gig and you go, okay, great. And do you go and, and w see what, have you had a response? I mean, do you, yeah. can you look at it? I mean, obviously your album's not out, but you could probably look at maybe your traffic or something. Do you go out and check to see, well, you like, know. Check the stats to see how the yeah, shows. Like yeah. Manager does probably like <laughs> too much, you know. <laughs> I try to stay away from that. I'm like, because uh, uh, if it's happening, it's happening. You know, I'm yeah. like. No, I understand. But, but in, it's, you know, all I can do is give it my best and try to connect with as many people as I can out there and the rest will follow. And if they're listening, hell yeah, I hope they are. And I think it has been, I think I, we have been seeing an increase in streaming and, and, and with the Instagram, you know, I help with the social media quite a bit. So that's literally, you can look at the followers going up and like we just oh, yeah. passed yeah. 4,000 followers or something, which is, you know, in retrospect to everything, not that much, but to us, like we've been building this set from the ground up, like. And we're seeing a lot more success and having playing the game, you know, but I think that like which playing the game, I mean, posting constantly, figuring out the algorithms so you're reaching more people. So then in turn, we can get people to come out to our shows who otherwise would have never seen us if we didn't take the time to go film that funny little video or go. And, yeah. you know, there's all these things that are so essential. And if you do, if you skip out on them, you might miss an opportunity to play for people that will be your lifelong fans. So it's an interesting thing that we're doing, but we have seen a lot of uh, increase in the, you know, um, the people that are streaming and stuff. Cause we just dropped like three singles before the album when in a fourth one, which is actually on the album. So okay. we've been trying to keep people on the hook and, you know, keep on put, pumping out music before the record actually drops. And, um, yeah, I have high hopes for the record, too. I think we'll reach a lot of people with all the press stuff we've been doing. And that's my only hope is, like, I wanted to reach people that need to hear it because it's a, there's a positive message, message behind it that I believe most people can identify with. So It's all about the music. 100%. And that's, like, what it has to be about. Otherwise, it wouldn't work for us. Like, we're not a gimmicky band. Like, I believe 
in what I write with my whole heart. Like that's the point of what we're doing. And like, yeah, we, we do want to, you know, reach, reach more people and be successful and make money and all, and, and all that, you know, but if I can make a living and like do this as my job, and possibly affect people like then we're then we're good whether that's paying a five you know my rent 500 bucks a month or whatever or we're, you know i move into a mansion whatever i'm not like looking for that but um we truly love what we're putting out you know and i think if we skip that the genuinity of our music or if we didn't feel that people wouldn't pick up on it as much because we kind of just threw shit at the wall for a while and like i think what really drew people in at first was songwriting matt was a shredder on the fiddle and we all gave a shit about it like we had fun up there whether somebody botches a solo and it was because i did surely a million times i played the worst solos that anybody that <laughs> play on a guitar i didn't take solos for and then it's not it's not about that but it's incredible to see how we've all really nose to the grindstone and like have built this thing up and now we're good like i can fully say i'm not the best but like i have gone i'm leagues ahead of where i was because we took it seriously and like yeah. I, people like that passion and we have been people have been really telling us that at these shows they're like your energy on stage is like beautiful oh, yeah. captivating i've had people say like you could mute it and i would still have fun just watching you watching guys you like, guys perform yeah. but that genuine like you can't make that shit up i mean obviously you can perform mm -hmm. so they were feeling sick you know whatever that happens it happens and, to like, everybody yeah you do the thing but on stage it's like you can't make that up like you can perform to a certain level but when the music hits and we're in the zone like everything stops everything goes away you don't think about shit except for in the moment and what you're what just listening to what's going on on stage and fully in the moment and like people pick up on that because i've seen bands that don't do that and that's fine i'm not saying everybody has to get super into it but it's it is fun watching people like thr thrive and have a good time presenting their craft to you you know because it's an extension of ourselves of our hearts sure it like, is. it's vulnerable getting up there and singing about hardships in life or or the ups and downs or whatever it may be relatable music to people that i think is healing you know so if we're not if i don't believe it y'all aren't gonna believe it you know well i think the one thing and i say this to everybody i interview if you're not having fun there's no point in doing it you know, I, I, I really believe the rest of it if it's meant to be will fall into place Right. You know, it'll start falling into place because you have to work. I, I'm getting ready to interview one of the, the guy that won Mississippi Songwriter of the Year this year. Okay. Oh. And he put up on Facebook just a while ago, man, this, this travel, it's killing me. And right. I just wrote, I said, you're paying your dues now. Your dues right. are, you're paying them right now. That's what you got to do. And, and you can't, you know, it'd be nice. None of us, we can't get on TikTok and, oh, look, we got 5 million people watch this. It doesn't happen like that very often. So, but you just made an important point, And that is, they know, I had somebody tell me this years ago, as a performer myself, people want to like you. They don't right. want to not like you. They want, as soon as you walk on stage, they want to like you. And, and you as a band or an individual performer, whatever you're doing, you're the one that either makes that work or screws it up. That's right. it. So if you're if you walk up there and and this is another thing most people don't understand if they're not performers, that forty five minutes to you is like a minute and a half. I oh, mean, wow. <laughs> unless we're playing terribly, if it starts out bad, oh, yeah, <laughs> have it terribly. I use that in quote. You know, is this the last song yet? <laughs> Dude, you're. I'm being. I'm like, man, be great. I'm like hitting my head like you're doing what you love right now like but the ego and like everything you got to put you got to check yourself because you can literally tear yourself apart out here and then somebody's like that was the best show I've ever seen and I was like I thought that was the worst thing I ever played in my entire life but but like, they don't I, know that they don't know I, that I, we call it uh, what my buddy told me is like leave it on the field like obviously critique yourself but like yeah. when it's what one is done you know we're gonna play a million flubbers and like and we're going to play a million bangers too. It's going to, you know, and, and I've tr already started learning to like, cause I used to beat myself up so bad about it. I wouldn't even go back and watch what we, I couldn't even listen to myself play. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like I just go do it. And I still don't really that much, but, um, you know, I'm trying to get out of that headspace to get, that's like, comes back to the point. It's like, if we provided a positive experience, me microscoping my playing for the night, shouldn't, uh, that shouldn't even be what, that's just me being egotistical about me wanting to, have my moments you know everybody wants to play great though so but i'm yeah, not and you and you know what what you think sucks at one point what you probably are there now it is now 
really 100% better when it really what did suck. I mean, now your right. your level is, of, of competence is so much higher now. Uh, yeah, so if you're up here, and then you used to be way down here, and now you like, always sucked right here. Now you're not going as far down. And, right. and I remember somebody telling me years ago, back years ago, one of the guys that came into one of my bands, he said, we were talking about the music, doing the covers. He said, remember, you do the hard stuff for the band, the easy stuff for the crowd. And I went, I, I never thought about that because right. they don't know. They don't know. I mean, if you start shredding, I'm a lead guitar player. So, if, you know, if I'm dancing all over the thing and the neck and I'm going crazy and people go, oh, he's really good. Right. Or if I pay three chords, so that it's it's not all, you know, it's just whether it's right. good or not. So you're what, right. you're, what you're seeing yourself going through now is a maturation process because now you're going, I could sit here and beat myself up. It's, it's kind of like playing football. You watch the tape to get better. Right. You know, and you know when you, oh, man, I threw an interception. Well, why did I throw that interception? Let's start going, you know, you start looking at it. I mean, right. I we used to record everything. And right. it is it is kind of like, oh, my God, I don't really want to listen to this. I don't want to, you know. Right, even, even, right. But there are there are moments where like, well, they really thought we sounded good. You know, and it's, it's, yeah. it's those moments that pull you through. Recently watching our shows, it's that's what's been inspiring about it. You know, I'll watch clips and I'm like, all right, boys, like we were on fire last night. That shit, that shit was dope, you know, and yep. so getting there, you know, and, and and we've really come a long way with it. So now I'm kind of past that point. I mean, if the other guys get bummed out about a show, I kind of like feel I can feel that energy and then I'll in turn get in my head about it. But I'm trying to maintain just like no, everybody take it seriously, but not don't take it too seriously. You know, like it is a very serious thing we're doing, but it's also like let's go out there and have fun if your glass is half empty you're drinking too fast if your glass is half full there's no thirst that will last because it is what it is and that's more of the same you can't change the weather but you can dance in the rain you can choose to be happy though it might be real hard you can cry bitch and moan about your shitty hand of cards but once they're down you're stuck here in the game you can't change the weather but you can dance in the rain you can beat yourself up over things you have done you can stand up to the man in your head with a gun who's held your mind hostage with a barrel to your brain you can't change the weather but you can dance in the rain who writes all the songs do you guys get together and write something or how does that all work I write everything that I sing. I write all that by myself. Okay. Um, Will, anything Will sings, Will wrote by himself. And then we'll take it to the band after that. Like structurally, I write all my lyrics. All, I, I have a trouble kind of collaborating. Not that it's trouble, but like the way that yeah. I write. I don't lyrics, collaborate either. <laughs> I don't I'm, do very well. Do, but I'm trying to learn how to be to open up more and be more vulnerable about that like that stream of consciousness and that flow of like whenever i'm writing lyrics it comes out and like that's how i would say it and sometimes i don't know why i wrote what i wrote but it ends yeah. up working but then to fit that to somebody else's style which me and will have we have collaborated on lyri lyrically on one song called um back to reality which is a super cool tune and it worked great you know and i want to start doing more of that i think with the third album you might see more of that but what i do is I write a shit ton, you know, I'm always writing in my notes. I'm always just building a material that I will eventually use for songs. It's a weird process I have, but um, it's just an organic pro. It's just, it kind of happened one day and I don't know, whenever I'm feeling it, I channel it and you know, it, it comes out, but then I'll take this, you know, I'll have the structure, I'll have the chords, I'll have the bass, maybe not a melody, but like I'll have the lyrics and then Matt, I'll bring it to the band. We'll kind of start learning it. Matt typically will play it one time on Matt's fiddle player and he'll just make a melody. That's incredible. Quite frankly, most of the time it's first try. It just comes to his head. Right. That's like part of the writing. And um, they're very essential parts of the songs though. Like you will know the song by the melody before I start singing the words, you know? Um, and then we decorate it. I call it building like I built the foundation and then bring in the crew and like make it a livable piece of, art you know or a house or found you know whatever right um, and kind of does the same thing he'll write his lyrics he'll have his structure but if if the band doesn't like something i'm so open to it i'm like okay this is not just me this is ours the me you know i i wrote the 
the the lyrics and all that but like the tune is everybody in the band so i like to have everybody's input and they can write more musical sections a little bit better than i can right now i mean i um parish has a is a wealth of knowledge on theory so like if we want to get weird and like throw a key change or like he's like hey instead of playing major here like let's go minor then we can accent this type of (laughs) stuff and we can pull out of that jam this way and it's going to be super dope and i'm like Okay, I trust you. Like, I don't really know. <laughs> the album that's coming out on November 11th, 2022, in case yep. people are watching this five years from now and you're famous, which I hope so. Um, we'll see. Manifest <laughs> right now. Cool. We'll, we'll come back to this video in five years and it'll be a beautiful thing. So, yeah, we'll put that out into the universe right now. That's right. That's what I always do. I got to tell you. Anyway, um, so these are all originals. How many's on it? I looked at how many's on it. How many tunes eight, are on it? Eight songs are on it. And then we, um, yeah, so eight tunes. And then we, uh, before that, we just released three singles that aren't on it. So, okay, 11, the, the three singles are not on the album, but within the past couple months, we or within this year, we'll, we will have released 11 new tunes, eight on the album. So, and so where did you do the recording at? Did you do it in different uh, places did or did you? called the studio. It's literally called the studio. Um, it's a Wood Brother, if you're familiar with the band, the Wood Brothers, uh-uh, uh, but that's okay. There incredible it's a great band um it's like their facility they keep a lot of their gear there and stuff i mean they're a very very successful band um so it's a really nice spot like we were going to record at a place called southern ground which is zach brown's studio our buddy dan davis who used to play banjo in our band actually he's on the first record on banjo he's an audio wizard you know he's that's what he does he's amazing and um he recommended the studio and um it was a beautiful experience. A very comfortable spot. We worked with a producer named John Maylander, um, who's a fiddle player. He plays for Bruce Hornsby. He played on a couple of uh, Billy Strings records, but um, mm-hmm. it was a super cool process. Very comfortable right down the road from our house. You know, we lived about 10 minutes from the studio. So, you know, we were busting ass in there. We were working hard, but it was nice to just be able to like go home, pass out and be super close. It just felt like we were right. You know, we were in the neighborhood. Right. Yeah, so you um, full cool process. Yeah, and so how long ago did you record all the music? We recorded the music a while ago actually. We recorded it like the end of February, but what was funny so it's about it's been this year though. I mean, it's all been it's finished this up year. this year. Yeah. Yeah. That's but not so bad. A, no, not that bad. Which, well, that's what's funny about it is like before I started recording records, I'm like, "Oh, they probably just record it and then they just release it the next week, you know?" I'm like <laughs> <laughs> And then I'm like it keeps on getting pushed back because of PR stuff. All this, we're being strategic about it. Things that I yeah. wouldn't think. I'm impatient and I want instant gratification. Let's put it out there, you know. I just want it out. People need to hear it. My friends want to hear it. But it's yeah. like you got, you got to incubate the thing. So we we recorded it in February, and then it took a little bit of a little bit of time from scheduling and stuff for John and Dan to like get together and do the post tracking production stuff and like. Um, Everybody worked really, really, really hard on it. And it like got completely finalized like a month ago. I want to say we listened to the masters and um, I think it came out amazing. I I mean, I backed this record for sure. So um, I November 11th can't come quick enough. All right, brother. Have a good evening. Take care of yourself. Yeah, absolutely. It was a great talking with you. All right. Good good show tonight. See ya. Appreciate it. Yep. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.